the knife show has been a very important part, a fun part of the Nut and Fancy Project since 2008, and I hope it's always that way. What do you mean you hope it's always that way, Nutton? Well, it really doesn't depend on me. It depends on you. I've always said that. You guys keep watching the KRVs. I keep making them. I buy the knives, test the knives, get data on the knives, develop opinions on the knives, bring them to tabletop. Bam, we got another KRV. That's how it works. Hope it's always that way. Seriously, because I love knives. I am a knife addict. I admit it. I think you are too if you're watching this. And I have made thousands upon thousands in the world. Yes, for that I have received curses and adulations both. Uh, I am so sorry, wives. That's right, blue tablecloth, get ready with a credit card. It might happen here again, no promises. But check this out. For this video, I am going to set an arbitrary time limit of 13 minutes. Yep, never done that before. In other words, come 13 minutes, I hit the stop button on the video. <laughs> no matter what I'm saying at the time, I'm just going to kill it. That's right, 13 minutes. Kind of an old school KRV. The old school really was 10 minutes in length because that's what YouTube limited, to, limited me to before I was a partner and it was a real rush. It's very, very difficult to get all the stuff in. I gotta go. I mean, the timer's running as you can see. On the table, Boker Plus Sniper Blade Works S2. That's what we're talking about right here. It is a much more affordable version, a Chinese produced version of the Sniper Blade Works Dark Hollow. I think that's the name of the knife. Here's a photo right there. It was designed by a dude named Lance Abernathy. No, I don't know him. Maybe one day I'll meet him. Friends of Almar, L-E-D-A, SWAT experience. And he designed the Dark Hollow. It has a following. Lots of people love that knife, from my understanding. It is a 3.8 inch blade. I'm talking about the custom Dark Hollow by Abernathy, Sniper Blade Works. You could get it in titanium frame lock or liner lock, and I believe they were produced only in batches, and they would sell very quickly, even at the $525 to $700 price range for one knife. You heard me right. There's people that will buy those types of knives all day long. If you don't believe me, go to any custom knife manufacturer, and you will see they are probably sold out or on a waiting list. There is a market for such blades. But a lot of us just don't have that type of money, and yet we love the design of the knife, the lines of the knife, we want one, but not for 700 bucks. Enter the Boker Plus Sniper Blade Works S2. The big question is, uh, how good is it compared to the custom? I don't know if I can answer that because I have not seen that custom knife in hand, personally, nor have I tested it in carrying EDC tasks, cardboard cutting, whatever. I don't know if I would, to be honest. Freaking $700 knife? No, I wouldn't. But I would say this knife for the money totally worth it totally jumping right into philosophy of use since we <clears throat> got that timer running how about food prep this is not the factory edge by the way not at all this is a edge pro apex edge i put on it nice beautiful edge i'm amazed how well that 440c took it because i've seen i don't know less than impressive 440 steel 440c steel come out of boker plus this isn't one of them wicked edge and wearing it on this i'm talking this edge on this type of blade makes it an ideal food preparation knife yes it is a modified warren cliff blade and in some knives i hate that but in this large blade this is a four inch blade on this s2 version it makes it a perfect chopping blade food preparation blade and yes i tested that it's almost a folding chef's knife and i think that is the premier calling for the sniper Blade Works S2, Boker variety. Skinning blade, could be, yep. Uh, I would think I would want a little bit more upsweep on that. Less Warren Cliff, more belly for a skinning blade, just me. And I know a lot of guys at EDC this sucker. Yeah, they love it, they, they think it's great. Collectible, probably not. It's a user for the price. How about size, weight, and feel? Well, it's not the lightest knife around, it's 5.6 ounces, you can thank probably uh, those stainless steel liners which are somewhat skeletonized for that and it's a large knife too with a lot of steel in it as you can see here it's flat ground mostly it's got a big old flat slab here there's where your weight is most of it 
In hand, though, it feels almost lighter to me. It really does. has a real nice feel to it. We'll talk about the handle here in just a second. Really well balanced. Again, the Steelers 440C isn't my favorite. Nope, it isn't. I'd almost prefer to have this in true AUS 8, AUS 8. That would be my preference. But the 440C, like I said, and as you can see how it sharpened, it's a pretty good choice. Mirror polished. I think I only took this to 1,000. I don't think I polished it to 3,000 on this one. And I really like how the blade has flats for your consistent angle sharpener. In other words, you just lay the knife right here as you're running your bevel or changing the bevel, reprofiling it to whatever you want to do. The result is one awesome edge. Out of box, I wouldn't say it is not awesome. Let's check this. Oh yeah, scientific paper cutting test on this carabie, as usual. Yeah, wicked edge on that. How about the speed? Well, here's another thing I love about the knife. It's just really, really fast. And I think it would take after the dark hollow in that respect. From what I've researched on that knife, that's a wicked fast flip opener as well. Lock up. Tight, kind of. What? It's not perfect, nothing? Uh, no. There's a little bit of wiggle in this one. And I actually have two versions to show you. Actually, three. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, three. And this is a good point to uh, bring up something negative. This was the first one I obtained in a long time. I think early 12. This is, you know, same knife, right? Except it has a very uh, bad lockup issue. One, it's a very late lockup, as you can see, right? And then it, the lock bar sticks like a mofo on this. There you go. Hey, nothing. you can do this. You can do that to s solve it. Well, you know what I did to solve it? Is I sent it back to Boker Plus. About a month later, they sent me this knife. And they sent the old one back, so that was pretty cool. I mean, I may fool around with this one. Uh, but, yeah, some of these you might have, you know, kind of a sticky lock bar on. That's kind of a negative. This one here, look at the lockup. Kind of a late lockup on that. Here comes a third version. Oh, yeah, this is a limited edition orange S2 by Blade HQ. Look in the upper right, order it quick, because they will go quick, probably. Good looking knife. I love orange for a knife. You guys know that. Here's the lockup. Yeah, that's more like it. You know, about half lock up there. It is a liner lock, obviously. Let's check the wiggle on this one. Oh, yeah, that one's nice and tight. If it's not, you can adjust it with a mini torch right there. Let's look at the stop pin. Well, that's a big stop pin, dude. Big stop pin. That one's fast as well. Nice lock up. So I would say the strength on this liner lock for EDC tasks, for chef tasks, would be excellent. How about a tactical PLU? You never said nothing about that. Um, I guess you could. I'm not fond of a Warncliffe style blade for tactical use. Yeah, but when we you know start looking at the handle, it's actually pretty grippy. Medium traction, Chinese produced G10, deep finger choil here, and outstanding jimping. <laughs> Man, what a refreshing thing that is. We rarely see that, but in this knife, it has it in spades, and it's very comfortable. That gives retention uh, a huge jump. So if you want to use it for tactical, you can. Uh, one thing I want to show you about this handle, though, it is very comfortable in the hand, like I said. It may not look it, but once you put it in hand, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's really no sharp edges. I'm going to try to show you that. I always look at the rounding job on the G10, right? But check this out. The lock bar as it comes from Boker is actually occluded by the G10 handle. And I did a little shop project on every knife you see on the table. I just got the Dremel with a little mini sanding drum and I patiently just, or maybe not so patiently, ground this down so I exposed the steel underneath and that way it follows the line. Now I don't have any occlusion for actuating the lock bar. Or the liner lock, better said. You can do that too. The coloration of the orange, by the way, is okay. I think the best orange I've ever seen in G10 is whoosh, that one. I don't know if the camera's capturing it, but it is much brighter, almost day glow in appearance, and that is the Benchmade Triage Manual Action, my preferred version of this knife. It's a Hall of Famer here in TMP for sure. That, I like this G10, and it is a really high traction G10, but US produced. Much more expensive than this one. I mean, US G10, Chinese G10. That's how it goes. Ergonomics, I will say, is 
are just excellent though for a large sized EDC knife or chef knife if you want. Here comes a clip. You'll have this much protruding. There's your lanyard hole right there. If you want, you can swap it for tip down or tip up carry. It comes out of box, I believe, oriented for the proper direction. That is tip up. <laughs> yes, that's how I like it. Always have. I've told you that. It's a pretty good clip. You know what it reminds me of, though? The skyline, doesn't it? This clip right here, about like the skyline. By the way, I know what you guys are thinking right now. You're watching the timer of this video, aren't you? You're like, oh, man, is he going to finish in time? I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. <laughs> how about durability? Well, I think probably a valid concern would be how will the lock bar wear. This knife, uh, let me see which one I have. Is this the one? This is the normal one. Has about a year of wear on it. So that's what you're looking at. Like I said, there is a little bit of wiggle in there, but I really did not try to adjust it prior to doing the video. Zytel backspacer, it's not pillar construction, so that's what shown right there. I would say the durability is going to be good, you know? 440C will rust on you if you're not careful with it, but a lot of knives fall into that category. And that will take us to value. Is it worth the money? Well, once again, link at the top is where you get this knife. Probably available in other places. I always try to work a deal for you whenever I can. I would say the knife is totally worth it. And it is, again, a version of the Sniper Blade Works Dark Hollow. Hope I'm getting the name right on that one. I think I am. So if you like that knife, you never heard of that knife, but in researching it, you go, hey man, that'd be a cool knife to have, but freaks, five to $700, no thanks. That's if you can get them. Like I said, they may not even be available. Here's your ticket right here, dudes. Yeah, Boker Sniper Blade Works S2. How about competitive options? Well, come on now, you can't get the world. If I only have a minute left on the video, how am I gonna roll in competitive options? I'm not. By the way, this orange one is serialized. This is number 67 of 500. That makes it even more special. Lending it a second kind of cool factor. The color notwithstanding. Do you guys like the orange knives too? I totally do. Oh, by the way, stone washed finished as well. Not bead blasted in these versions. Oh, that's good looking, man. There's the logo. Sniper Blade Works logo. Most excellent. Highly recommended. That's what I'm going to say. Bottom line. You know, I've talked about the issues with a lock bar. Correctable. If it's not, send it back to Boker. They will hook you up. Done. 20 seconds early?